So uh, we're now moving into our uh, verification challenge speakers. Our first speaker is from Dialog Semiconductor, Steve Holloway, who's a principal verification engineer at Dialog. Um, Steve has 15 years experience of verification methodologies, uh, including ERM, which I guess does show his age a bit, OVM and UVM, and formal property checking. He has led the verification of large-scale consumer SOC projects and joined Dialog Semiconductor in 2011. Previously, he worked for Dulos, NXP, and Trident Microsystems. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> um, good morning, everybody. Um, as Mike says, I'm Steve Holloway from Dialog Semiconductor, and I think I've done a number of these talks for Mike over the years, uh, but I've never really introduced the company that I've worked for. Um, so I always assume that people knew something about Dialog Semiconductor, but I thought I'd just throw in a marketing slide at the start just to sort of set the scene on what we do. Um, so really, we are focusing on mixed signal, high volume uh, applications. So see, we've, we've experienced quite some, some uh, spectacular growth over the last few years. Um, and we are really, our value add is in a low power, power management, uh, power conversion, low power audio, these sort of technologies. And there's obviously we've, over the last, uh, we, of late, we've uh, done some di diversification in our product portfolio, and we are in uh, lighting applications, uh, wearables, and um, uh, and Bluetooth low energy is one, is one of our big big sort of uh, hopes for the future. Okay, so I think Mike asked us uh, a number of people to present our verification challenges as as users of verification technology. Let's say, so uh, I put together three. So challenge one. Uh, okay, right, so we, <laughs> bugs are everywhere, okay? Uh, so I, I promise I didn't talk to Fabian before this presentation, I did it last night, um, but really the, I think he captured it quite well in, in his uh, presentation that we obviously were here to look for bugs in the DUT, um, but then again when we're designing a new bit of verification IP, test bench, UVM, UV, uh, UVM agents, we find uh, maybe we've got bugs in our stimulus generation, bugs in our monitoring, bugs in our checks, bugs in our coverage uh, models, even bugs in the class library. Okay, we all know there's bugs in the UVM class library, and heaven forbid, bugs in the simulator that we have to deal with. Okay, so I think I have more or less the same figures as, as Fabian. I took these from uh, Harry Foster's uh, last verification survey. We actually spend most of our lives in debug mode. In fact, I spoke to somebody yesterday who was complaining to me on the phone and saying, all I do in my, in my job is debug other people's code. So that's what we do as verification engineers. That's basically what we're doing, understanding other people's code, trying to debug it, even things like verification IP. We, we're working with a verification IP from a third party at the moment, and we have exactly that problem, trying to debug somebody else's code. Not only that, it's encrypted. Okay, So we have these issues to face. So. We face these challenges by trying to um, use the right tools or to actually, when we're writing our environments, of course, we have to write these environments so that we, they're very debug friendly and we've got the right messages to pinpoint where the, the issues are. Okay, challenge number two, I've called plenty of tools but not enough resources. Okay, so we have a, a real, a real um, assortment of, of, of technologies, uh, methodologies that we can put into our verification melting pot. And we, you know, in, in, in reality, we use a combination of these approaches to do our verification. Um, but quite often, the choice of which approach we use is made quite early in the v-planning process. And it's not necessarily always the best approach, because we don't necessarily know at that stage what, how the design's implemented. And also, that decision can be made by people that seem to be, um, a, a, you know, a champion of FPGA prototyping or a champion of formal, let's say, or a UVM guru. So they will think about the best tool that fits their outlook on life, so, which may not be the best and optimal solution in terms of number of lines of code to find the, find the bug. Okay. We're, so therefore, we're limited by a pool of experts and within our, our organization, the people that can do these things, that they can, that they can face these challenges. So one of the ways that we try and address this is to try and build a layer. Like of course, UVM addresses this by having a, being able to separate the environment away from the test writer. But with all these different tools, 
we faced the challenge of plugging them together, collecting the metrics, how do we organize the metrics, how do we merge them if we need to merge them, how do we differentiate. Um, so there's quite some work in terms of building, uh, integrating these diverse environments together. And another particular issue that we have within Dialog, because we are a mixed signal company, is our interface between analog and digital worlds. Okay, so there's, in reality, there's quite a divide between the analog and digital camps, and the interfacing between those in terms of the design and personalities and the, and the teams is crucial. So, for example, we have uh, models that uh, are modeling the some analog functionality that we're running in our digital simulations of various levels of complexity, and the issues that we have are obviously these battles that these models aren't correct, then we've got, we could potentially um, uh, conceal bugs in the design. I mean, only, only recently, last week, we found some issues with th simple things like pad models, okay, which basically did hide, hide some, uh, some, some, some functionality which would have been wrong if it went into the silicon. So the issue we have is who owns and verifies and maintains these models, okay? We need the analog people to, to, to provide something that's, that has some fidelity to their, their transistor level design, but are they interested in providing that for themselves? So it's really for the digital team. Okay, two minutes. Final slide. Okay, this is not really a, a sort of tool or methodology um, challenge. This is to do with the mindset. Okay, so the verification mindset is a very different way of thinking compared to design designing mindset, and it's not just a knowledge of our languages and our object orientation, system Verilog, UVM, whatever. Even though they take a lot of a lot of uh, intellect to try and get your head around these things. It's really things like making sure that we find bugs which uh, almost certainly exist in the design. We stress the design. We push it into the corner cases. We don't just interoperate with those protocol interfaces. We should be uh, intolerant of design inconsistency in terms of specifications. Okay, So it's a question of making sure that we build that into our verification mindset and our verification environment from the ground up, okay, rather than retrospectively bolting in error, in error injection. And uh, reuse and debug should be considered right from the start. So not just saying that everybody should use UVM, but you have to use UVM in the right way. So, does this thing, does it vertically integrate when you run this in another uh, simulation environment? Are you sending the right UVM messages or are you just drowning in console output? And then finally, the right use of metrics. Test case passing rate is a design mindset. Okay, Our objectives from the verification domain are to close our coverage metrics, okay? which is giving us an indication of when we think we finished verification. Okay? And we never do coverage without checks. That wraps it up. I think that's the last slide of my challenges. Thank you very much. If you're covering some functionality and you're you're not checking, then it, if you your checks are switched off, then there's no value to that because you're not verifying anything. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you.